Tinder swindlers are all over the world. Who are the worst scammers who specialize in fleecing unlucky women who are just looking for love? Let's get right into it. Number five, Brazilian Tinder swindler. He stole the hearts and savings of seven women via Tinder. Then he led the police on a high-speed chase through the streets of Sao Paulo, Brazil in September 2022. But no one expected it to end the way it did. Renan Augusto Gomez decided to go by Augusto Keller on the online dating apps Tinder, Happen, and Lovo. Just like the Netflix famous Tinder swindler, Simon Leviev, Augusto mainly targeted upper middle-class white women between 35 for 40 years old. He used a sob story to get them to pity him and offer their money. Augusto posed as a civil engineer who was looking for love but was plagued by trauma after his German parents died in a car accident in Brazil. He claimed to be raised as an orphan. His profile also mentioned how he loved to cook and he was only interested in a serious long-term relationship. It seemed like Augusto took his relationship seriously. He went to the women's homes and met their families. Once he earned his victim's trust, Augusto asked them for money. Once he got it, he ghosted them right away. He said he had financial issues with the bank or that he owed tax money to the Special Department of Federal Revenue of Brazil. One woman says that Augusto stole more than 35,000 pounds over the course of their relationship. Another woman said that Augusto fled with her money after they decided to go into business together. But the ruse ended when he swindled one woman, a teacher, out of $28,000. They dated for about four months until he mysteriously disappeared with her money. When she called the police on him, she admitted to being suspicious of Augusto for a while since he was always getting a new cell phone. Police tracked down Augusto driving through the streets of Sao Paulo. Augusto started driving away, beginning a high-speed car chase with several marked police cars. Eventually, they caught up with him and rammed into the back of his car, causing Augusto's car to ram into three others. Thankfully, everyone was okay. Number four, Canadian Tinder Swindler. Salim Damji is a scammer extraordinaire, and he found a new way to make a quick buck. He started romancing women in the greater Toronto area, and you guessed it, he convinced them to lend him money. Damji became the leader of a romance and investment Ponzi scheme that cost his 20 victims $1.2 million. Damji and one of his victims, Melissa, met in September 2013. He said he was an RBC investment banker and asked if she wanted to invest with him. She said no that night, but after maintaining a relationship mostly over the phone, for a year, she decided she could trust him with her money. She was caring for a sick relative and could use the extra income. She sent him $50,000 and continued to send him smaller payments. Melissa gave Damji a total of $67,000. Damji promised that her investment would generate big profits, but she started growing suspicious. He was supposed to meet her for dinner on Valentine's Day, but never showed up. He said he had to fly to India last minute to be with his parents after a near-fatal car crash that left both his mother and father in a vegetative state. But when Melissa tested him, he always had the right answer. She asked him the time, wherever he was, and he was always right. Then he started asking Melissa to send money for him to build a school in Ethiopia, which was of interest to her. She gave him a few thousand toward the project, but when she started asking for money back, Damji said his accounts were frozen because the Canada Revenue Agency was investigating him. Melissa took matters into her own hand. She called private investigators who found nothing on the fake name he was using, Salman Darcy. So they continued exchanging flirty messages with Melissa believing that he didn't have a record. Eventually, though, he stopped responding. A few months later, Melissa received a message from another woman asking her to stop sending messages to her boyfriend. A few emails later, Damji's supposed girlfriend revealed his real name. That's when Melissa found out about his sordid past. By the time she realized she was scammed out of her life savings, Damji was on the run, and her money was long gone. Melissa eventually found out that all of her money was used toward Damji's gambling addiction. For Damji, scamming was a lifestyle, and he had a routine. Damji would either go to Aurora's fancy restaurant and dance club Greystones or use the online dating app Plenty of Fish to find his victims. While it originally appeared to investigators like a romance scheme that swindled unsuspecting women out of thousands, turned out that it was actually a Ponzi scheme. Damji told women he was an investment banker and promised various women that if they invested with him, he would bring them generous returns. Damji gave his victims an initial payout to show that their investments were profitable. But then, when they gave him more money to invest, he disappeared. He gave a pitch.
rich, similar to Richard Gears in Pretty Woman. He claimed that he bought companies, broke them up, and sold their assets for a profit. He promised to help his victims get out of debt and earn a higher return on investment. One of Damji's accomplices convinced a woman at a bar to invest $50,000, which was used to pay off the initial returns of the other victim. Damji was no stranger to the justice system. In 2002, he scammed thousands of Ismaili Muslims out of millions of dollars. He claimed that his company, Strategic Trading System, had a new teeth whitening technology that was sure to make every investor a millionaire. He promised that Colgate Palmolive would eventually buy the technology for $400 million and double everyone's investment. Damji guaranteed a ridiculous 2,000% return on investment. Ismaili Muslims from all over Canada wanted to invest in Damji's scam, some even throwing $100 bills into his hands as they stood outside a mosque. But instead of working on teeth whitening technology, Damji was living the high life. He lived in an $800,000 luxury condo at Palace Pier and spent evenings squandering away his victims' money via online casinos. He also bought a strip mall, luxury cars, and homes for relatives. Members of the close-knit Ismaili Muslim community were at first hesitant to go to the police, but did once they became certain that they were duped. Investors found out that he scammed at least 6,000 people and were able to recover $350,000 from Damji's internet casino account based in Costa Rica. Damji was sentenced to seven and a half years in jail after he pleaded guilty to swindling $42 million from 866 people in Canada's Ismaili community. The total number of victims from around the world was estimated to be closer to 6,000 in a scam worth at least $69 million. Investigators believe the total financial loss to be closer to $100 million. Since Damji already spent some time in prison, he only had six years and three months left to serve. His victims believe this sentence was nowhere near enough. Police began investigating Damji in 2014 when a victim reported that a man in Aurora convinced her to invest more than $50,000 in his company. But once she sent him the money, he was uncontactable. Officers realized that she wasn't the only one. Several other victims had been scammed in the same way by the same people. In 2015, four men and one woman were arrested in connection to Damji's romance investment scheme. Altogether, 20 women lost at least $12 million. Yao Ming Liang, Shafin Damji, Tatiana Kronova, and Ansari Farhan were among the suspects arrested for the crimes. Damji was charged with several fraud charges, forgery, and providing a false statement in writing. Number 3. Aussie Tinder Swindler Grant Greentree scammed multiple women out of thousands of dollars through online dating platform. He was on a roll in Australia until he was exposed by none other than his daughter. When Kim Dalquin downloaded Bumble, she was looking for a soulmate. What she found was a scammer. A few right swipes into her search for love, Kim matched with a Maclean who claimed that he was a successful businessman with a large international property portfolio. As they started to get to know each other, MacLean revealed his real name to be Grant Greentree. Despite the red flags, Kim couldn't ignore the deep connection she made with Grant. She was impressed by his success. So when he asked to borrow money, she never doubted that he would pay her back. Every time she expressed any concerns, he had the perfect answer. He promised that he would receive a big payment once he turned 60. In the meantime though, Kim was footing the bill for luxury vacations in million dollar mansions. And when Grant said he wanted Kim to meet his daughter, Isabella, he told Kim an emotional story about how his first wife, Elizabeth, Isabella's mother, died of cancer. Kim and Grant got married in Yara Valley in 2020. But Isabella said her mother was very much alive. As Isabella and Kim sat in the backseat of Grant's car, Isabella asked her dad to turn up the radio and air conditioning so he couldn't hear her telling Kim about her dad's lies. That's when Grant's web of lies started to complete completely unravel. For Isabella, this was nothing new. Her childhood was filled with a revolving door of women. One year into his marriage with Kim, she realized that Grant, the man she thought was her forever, was just spinning a web of lies that left her close to broke. When she confronted Grant about a divorce, the loving, caring man she once thought he was completely disappeared. He became angry and threatening. Kim filed a domestic violence order against him to protect herself. Another one of Grant's ex-girlfriends, Melissa Sexton, said she had an on and off relationship with Grant for more than 25 years. It finally ended when he promised to pay back the $33,000 he owed her once he started a new job. She never saw one cent of it, but now she absolutely despises him. His other exes agree. His first wife, who chose to remain anonymous, filed a restraining order against him in 2008 after he allegedly assaulted her. She says she still owed over $400,000 in child support, which would be a drop in the bucket for Grant if his so-called wealth was real. Grant's second wife also applied for a restraining order just a year into their marriage. Grant's lies were not confined to Australia. He began a relationship with an American woman, Trisha Connors, who got pregnant 
pregnant shortly after meeting Grant. Her son, now 23 years old, has no relationship with his father. Connors is grateful that she got out of that relationship when she did. She called Grant's behaviors sociopathic. Kim tells other women who meet Grant to run fast. Number two, South African Tinder swindler. In 2022, Amon Namara conned at least three women in South Africa out of their money. Of course, he found his victims through Tinder, which earned him the easy nickname, the South African Tinder Swindler in the news. Namara took his dates on lavish dates in an attempt to convince them of his wealthy lifestyle. Then he asked to borrow money and promised to pay it back. He went so far as to meet his dates' as friends and family, convincing them that he was a trustworthy and kind partner. Many of the women were wooed by Namara's charm and fancy dates. A single mother of two just came out of a stressful relationship when she started talking to Namara. They met for lunch, but she thought he was a sweetheart. In August of 2020, Namara told her he was struggling financially. He asked to borrow 15,000 Rand. Namara promised to pay it back by the weekend. He continued asking for money from her with the promise to pay it back. Eventually, Namara owed the woman 52,000 Rand plus an additional 60,000 Rand worth of items from her boutique. One of the big ticket products was a Rolex watch worth 10,000 Rand. Meanwhile, Namara promised another woman a romantic getaway. But first, he needed some money for the book. She gave him 16,000 Rand, and he left her stranded at the airport. The woman took to social media to express her anger. Soon, other women started coming forward with similar experiences. Namara, originally from Uganda, didn't just steal money. He swindled his matches out of jewelry and clothing, too. He told his Tinder matches that he was a millionaire in the fuel industry who owned a Bentley and had several properties in Johannesburg, South Africa. He said he was involved in international business. Eventually, authorities caught wind of Namara's scam. He was arrested and charged with fraud in March 2020. Number one, Tinder swindler stoppers. We're about to do a 180 right now. Instead of focusing on the Tinder swindlers, we're going to discuss a couple of girls who busted a Tinder swindler. Two sisters from New Zealand, Emma and Sarah Ferris, teamed up to stop a Tinder swindler from stealing $300,000 from Emma. Well, sort of. Emma matched with Andrew Tonks Thompson on Tinder in 2018, and they hit it off right away. But little known to the single mother of two, Andrew was living a double life as a con man. Several restaurants and former employees Employers had claims against Andrew. In 2007, he was charged with stealing after he sold a company car and used the money to buy a motorbike. He was sentenced to 100 hours of community service. He warned Emma not to look him up online because he had been the victim of identity theft. He made fake financial documents to show her that he was a successful entrepreneur, former AFL player, and professional wakeboarder. So when he told Emma he wanted to invest in property with her, she trusted him. She gave him $50,000. Right as Emma gave him another $250,000, she learned that her boyfriend and an investment partner was a liar and a convicted con man. Instead of confronting him right away, Emma decided to play along with his game. When she asked for the money back, Andrew promised to pay it back as soon as he finished his latest foreign spy mission, which was also a lie. He wrote her a letter saying that he was a spy for a counterterrorism unit, which is why he had to be so secretive. She gathered enough evidence to bring to the authorities. New Zealand police found Andrew as he landed in Christchurch and brought him directly to the Christchurch men's prison. Andrew, thinking that Emma still had no idea of his past, told the police officer to call her and say that he wasn't going to make it to their date the next day. Andrew was sentenced to 28 months in jail for stealing $300,000 from Emma in addition to fraud against a Queenstown restaurant owner and alcohol company. He was ordered to pay Emma $63,800 and an additional $8,000 for emotional harm, still far less than what she was owed. But Emma later learned that Andrew successfully appealed and got the $8,000 reduced to $5,000. And he was out on parole using the dating app Bumble. When Emma heard the news that Andrew was out of jail and ready to target more women, she sprung into action. She teamed up with her sister to start a podcast called Conning the Con, dedicated to telling her story and warning women about scammers lurking on dating apps. By broadcasting her experience, Emma learned about several other women that Andrew swindled in the past. One of Emma's most important tips is to listen to your gut. If you feel like there are red flags, you're probably right. She also said that if something doesn't feel right, look up your date's name online and ask them about their dating intentions. Most of all, Emma encourages her listeners to be comfortable by themselves before looking for a partner. Click to watch one of these next videos. Let us know in the comments section what you think is the best way to find a date. Is it to go out and about in real life or is it swiping left and right on all the different apps?